Bill Belichick on WEI yesterday with something more than a series of grunts and monosyllabic words on what his future will hold as coach of the New England Patriots. Have a listen. Whatever success I have had, I've tried to go about my job the same way every week. Win, lose, you know, good years, bad years, whatever they are each week. Get ready to go for that week. Do the best you can to help your team win. And after that game, move on to the next one. And at the end of the season, that's the end of the season. But on a week-to-week basis, I mean, I don't want to spend time or get caught up in what happened five years ago or what's going to happen two years from now or, you know, I mean, a bunch of other random stuff. So just working on the Jets. Yeah, I'm committed to the team that I'm coaching right now. The players that are here, they deserve my best every day, and that's what I'm going to give them. Did we speed that up, or did he have, like, five cups of coffee? I've never heard him talk that fast uh, in his life. Uh, upbeat, there was, everything, right. There was right. quality to that. Yes. Yeah, I know. Yes. I know. I'm not sure that was him. I, it's, it's, it is. Well, it, you know, I don't know. Maybe he's heard people like us and, and other people out there complain about, like, why does it always have to be so, like, down and, you know, borderline disrespectful? Right. I, you know, maybe, you know, he's not bringing in rings and trophies anymore. And now he realizes, Hey, I got to change my attitude a little bit here. I, I don't know. But yeah, that was like, I, the first thing I, when I heard it, I was like, Whoa, Bill's spry and ready to go this morning. Uh, th- that was, you don't hear him like that a whole lot, but, uh, said a lot of good things. And I don't doubt that one. I mean, Bill Belichick, I, I can say just from experience, he is totally focused all the time. And the things he said there, he really does believe, and that's the way he acts. And he shows that, and I'm sure he's showing that today in the, in the office of New England. And I don't think him leaving the Patriots is the foregone conclusion that we would assume Sounds like it, it is. That's right. not to say he's staying. But I said this when we were taping our third quarter video the other night that that Robert Kraft is basically going skydiving here and he's in the plane, the planes in the air, the parachutes on the helmets on, you know, the goggles, they go from up here to down here. And then you go to the, the door and you look out and then you decide whether or not you're going to do it. So this whole season has been the plane in the air, the parachute on the helmet on the goggles down And now after Sunday's game against the Jets, he's going to be standing at the door. Is he going to jump? Because the question is, who do you replace Bill Belichick with? Are you willing to part? Kind of like the same quarterback conversation we had last segment. You know what the guy does well. You know what he doesn't do well. You know where the weaknesses have manifested themselves. Whether it's he's resistant to change, the game has passed him by, he has been too stubborn about the size of his coaching staff because he can't trust anybody. You know, I I mean, has he embraced the new reality of football the way that he should? And if he had, how much better would he be? But he's still pretty damn good. That's the problem. He's still pretty damn good on game day and preparing what he has on his roster for game day. Are the Patriots willing to move on from that? Knowing that, you know, what's he got? Three, four, five years left as a practical matter. Is there something to be said for saying to the paying customers, we know you're not happy, but we've decided Bill Belichick deserves to stay here as long as he wants to. We've made it through our test year for deciding whether or not we're going to move on for Bill Belichick. We've decided, all things considered, we're not so sure we can do better than what we currently have. Warts and all, attitude issues and all, grunts and disrespect to reporters and anyone else who happens to be in his orbit. That's just the way he is, right? That's the way he is. Yeah. He's still a damn good coach. Damn good coach. I'm not going to be surprised if Robert Kraft decides I'm not willing to risk going backward in the name of going forward or at least staying where we are as a team that can be competitive. We just make a few changes. Maybe we can convince him. Maybe that's what this comes down to. A meeting with Robert Kraft where Kraft says, I want to continue this relationship. Here's what we have to do. Will you do it or will you not do it? And if he says yes, fine. If he says no, see you later. It may be that simple, Chris. Yeah, I, I, I think it's fair to say there, there's some tweaks that need to be made. I certainly wouldn't be shocked if the Kraft family just said, you know what, where we are as an organization, we think Bill Belichick is the best to kind of – pull us out of this and, you know, get us headed in the right direction once again. I don't think that's crazy, right? 
But yeah, there's got to be just again. You said it right. Belichick, the X, the game is not passing by X's and O's wise. Definitely not. I mean, Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills couldn't do anything last week. There's I I watched the film yesterday. I mean, there, there, there's nobody open anywhere. They can't do anything. I mean, if if ba- if they have a quarterback, uh, and a, a, a like at least a a least bit competent quarterback and offense, they're going to beat Buffalo on Sunday. They outplayed Buffalo. I mean, in the Buffalo, you know, with the, the turnovers the New England offense caused, the kick return to start the game, right? You know, I, I, they, they had them on the ropes. They did. But the New England offense messed up. But I think the, the point I was trying to get to there as I was stumbling a little is, is that, yeah, there's got to be tweaks to what you're saying a little bit, whether that's, you know, bringing somebody else in there to kind of, Hey, look like we need to change some personnel on our team and have some fresh ideas. Or, of course, the quarterback offensive coordinator issue that's got to be do- you know dealt with a little bit. And they are looking like they're going to have a top three or four pick here to where maybe they look at it and go, Hey, we can get a special quarterback. We got Belichick. Maybe he can build this thing around this guy and send us off in the right direction when he does decide to leave two, three, four years from now. And think about the way that kids now are wired as they come out of college. They're making money under NIL. Yeah. And, you know, Tom Brady was the perfect guy to step into that Belichick reality because he was already pre-beaten down by being drafted 199th. He was willing to take whatever Belichick threw at him. He submitted entirely to the idea that it's going to make me better and I'm going to constantly prove myself. And he was in that mindset of, I have to prove myself. I have to prove myself. I'm not going to draft a guy who's already proven himself. And that guy may not want to deal with a Bill Belichick. So yeah, I think, I think some real changes in attitude are going to have to be made. And maybe that phone call yesterday, possibly made from a phone booth by Bill Belichick is a sign, very subtle, but very real. Just the way he talked, maybe he realizes, like like Tom Coughlin did in 2007, when he changed his ways just enough to not only save his job, but win the Super Bowl with the Giants over the Patriots, by the way. Yeah. Maybe Belichick in his 70s. I think I don't like this notion that people are incapable of changing. I think we all change. We all grow or we don't. Right. But we change. We're not the same person our entire life. Maybe it's possible that as Bill Belichick sees what's coming, he changes in order to maintain the thing that he's been doing since 2000. And I don't know, it's a small little sign, but the way he, I've never heard him talk the way he talked yesterday. I swear, I thought they sped it up or they injected caffeine straight into his veins. Yeah. I've never in 24 years heard him talk that way. Those were early early years Bill Belichick type of uh, interview that we saw there. And you know, again, you, know, you said a lot of good things and, and and I back you up on that. Yeah, I, I mean, he he's still one of the best defensive minds in the game. You know, as we've seen him, his son, Jar- Gerard Mayo, whatever, the defensive staff, they're killing it. They kill it. You know, they know how to evaluate offensive linemen for the most part. They do that. It's, the, the issue has all been about really offensive coordinator and wide receivers. Those are the, and that, and right now, you know, in the NFL, those are two big important things in our league. I mean, you're, you say it every week, it comes up at least one time. Hey, if you got a team, you want to, you want an offensive guy to be the head coach because you don't want him to leave. So those are areas where they've really dropped the ball, right? So the other stuff, it's like I don't worry about game planning, X's and O's and all of that. I think it's a little bit of like, hey, you just got to change your mold or the way you're thinking a little bit about what works offensively in 2023 or 2024, and that's where it's got to be tweaked. But all the injuries they've had on defense and – I mean, nobody can move the ball on them. I mean, they're they're phenomenal with what they do, and I think that still speaks to where his brain is and how good of a coach he is uh, as far as X's and O's and getting his team ready in that way. And I'm not sure that this can be deprogrammed out of a 70-something Bill Belichick because I believe it goes all the way back to growing up at the Naval Academy and having that military mindset so baked into who he is. I just feel like... If he could trust people a little bit more, sure. If it all doesn't have to be a secret 
everything that happens in New England is top secret because he's always on the lookout for who it is that might betray him in some way. That is a that is a rough way to live where where you're constantly looking for spies and scoundrels and those who would stab you in the back. And think of how it limits your ability to be the best you can be and to build a good team of personnel around you when your first thought is, how loyal is this person going to be to me? And is there someone else or some other team out there or somebody else they're working for or somebody else that they that they value their relationship with them more than they value the relationship with me. I, I just think that that's held him back. And even despite all that, look at what he's done. It just shows you how good of a coach he is, that he's overcome these other issues that I think have have operated to put one hand behind his back in a lot of cases. Yeah. I, I mean, great coach. They've blown some high draft picks. I think that's what we're talking about and things like that. But – They've also killed it with middle round and free agent type picks where you'd go, I've never seen a team have that many type of guys contribute on a football team. Uh, there's been issues. But, I, you know, again, I don't know what happens here. But I think we've kind of hit on what needs to be straightened out a little bit with their football team. It, it, it's really one side of the ball. It's just been a debacle for the last two years. It really has. Now, Josh McDaniels. Hey, he's back in the fold. Does he get back on the offensive staff with the Billy O'Brien? I don't know how that shakes out, right? But having the draft, the, the high draft pick, maybe getting a Drake May or somebody like that up in New England, you know, spending a little money on a big time free agent, wide receiver, or whatever. You know, you look at their football team and you just go, it's all about the offensive side of the ball. The defense really doesn't need a whole lot of tweaking. They got Young secondary guys, they got a ton of talent there. Their D-line has been replenished and have some young talent there. Linebackers are good, so we'll see if they can make the proper adjustments here. But, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Got no feel for yeah. what's going to happen with Belichick here in, in New England. The other thing we have to keep our eye on is the very real possibility that Belichick and the Patriots have a loose understanding that they're just going to play it cool while the other coaching searches play out and then somebody is going to call the Patriots about possibly trading for and it's not really a trade but it is a trade Bill Belichick and then the separation would come later I've said all along though Bill Belichick has no reason to go along with something like that he should say to Robert Kraft right out of the gates keep me or fire me I'm not going to be a party to this this deal where the team I go to has to give up draft picks and it's going to be harder for me to be successful there in order for them to get me. I know ego kind of plays into that. Oh, look at what they gave up to get me. It also hampers your ability to be as competitive as you could be when your new team has to give up stuff to get you in the first place. But that is something to keep an eye on because there are some who believe it's just got to play out over a few weeks, which means once teams do their searches, once teams get to a point where they're like, well, we can't find anybody we really like, yeah. let's pick up the bat phone and call Robert Kraft and try to get Bill Belichick. People are watching that as well. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.